My name is Brian Kondracki, and on behalf of Asil Elieva, Manuel Egeli, Jason Palakis, and Nick Nikiforakis, I'll be presenting our work titled Meddling Middlemen, Empirical Analysis of the Risks of Data-Saving Mobile Browsers. Smartphones are everywhere. Today, mobile devices account for almost half of global website traffic. On top of this, there's an increased consumption of multimedia resources, such as videos and images. Because of this, users are forced to alter their browsing behaviors in order to budget the available data in their mobile data plans. However, studies have shown that users are typically not successful at doing this on their own. Therefore, enter data-saving browsers. Data-saving browsers are internet browsers which leverage the computing power of the cloud to offload rendering and compression of web pages. This shifts the burden of budgeting mobile data away from the users and onto the browsers themselves, which allows for unimpeded browsing. So to demonstrate this, I have a graphical example. So in a traditional mobile browsing environment, the mobile device will connect to the end web server over an encrypted HTTPS connection. The mobile device will send a GET request, and the web server will send the payload back over this encrypted channel where it's then rendered on the user's device. In a proxy browser environment, this HTTPS connection is interrupted at a data-saving proxy server. So now the client will send a GET request over an encrypted connection to the proxy server, where it's decrypted and sent along over an additional HTTPS connection to the end web server. The end web server will then send back the same full size payload to the data saving proxy server where it's decrypted and compressed. And then a smaller payload will be sent to the user's device where it's then again rendered for the user to view. So the user gets decreased mobile data usage, increased browsing speeds, and an encrypted connection to the proxy server if they didn't already have one, say if they were browsing over HTTP. However, users must trust that data-saving proxy servers respect their privacy, adhere to the best security practices, and aren't outright malicious. So in this study, we had three questions we wanted to answer. First, how effective are data-saving browsers in saving user data? Do data-saving proxy servers utilize their privilege position to extract or modify user data in transit? And lastly, does enabling data savings mode adversely affect a user's security posture? We will now look at the current state of the data saving browser ecosystem. So to determine how many data saving browsers currently exist, we conducted an exhaustive search of the Google Play Store for browsers that claim to provide data saving functionality. So we searched for terms such as data saving browser, cloud browser, proxy browser, and downloaded all browsers that were returned by those search queries. We then filtered these lists down further by testing each browser for data proxying by requesting a web page from a server under our control and keeping any browser that requested that page from an IP address different than that of our testing device. And what we came up with is these nine browsers in the table on the right. Uh, and these browsers have a, a diverse set of features such as some uh, proxy connections to HTTPS sites while others don't. Uh, and some have data savings mode on by default, while others require the user to explicitly uh, opt in. And what's important to note here is that Opera Mini, while it's a single browser, has two data savings modes, high and extreme, and each of them have distinct behaviors. So we consider them separately for the remainder of this talk. So the important points here is that first of all, major browser manufacturers provide data saving functionality. Also, data saving browsers make up a large percentage of the overall mobile browser market share. So the findings that we present later on in this talk have an effect on a large number of users. So after studying these browsers, we determined that there's actually a more complicated network that's hidden from sight. So rather than this basic architecture diagram, it actually looks something more like this where the client device will connect to a gateway proxy server and traffic is routed from that gateway server to an endpoint proxy server that does the actual communication with the end web server. So over the course of 30 days, 
uh, we recorded every unique IP address uh, when requesting a page from a server under our control using each of these browsers. And what we found is that on average, uh, these browsers have an order of magnitude more endpoint servers than gateway servers. Uh, and this makes sense since the gateway servers uh, appear to act uh, mostly as uh, load balancers for these infrastructures and also uh, serve the purpose of routing user traffic to the most optimal endpoint server depending on where the user is geographically and where the end web server is geographically. We also looked at the configurations of the proxy servers we encountered. So we, did, we define a configuration as a unique set of open ports and listening services, which we determined using a nmap scan of each proxy server we encountered. And out of the nine browsers we study, we found that only Opera browsers and Puffin browsers actually allow nmap scans of their proxy servers. The others block our, blocked our scan attempts. Uh, and as you can see, on average, Opera proxy servers listen on around 20 ports and have a large number of unique configurations. In contrast, Puffin browsers only listen on one or two ports and have a very small number of configurations. And what this means is that as you increase the diversity of a configuration set, this increases the complexity of implementing network level defenses, such as firewall rules. Next, we look at the effectiveness of data savings mode. So to get users to actually download their browsers, vendors advertise mobile data savings up to 90%. So to verify these claims, we measured the amount of data used with data savings mode enabled and disabled in the following scenarios. First, when visiting the Alexa Top 100 sites, and also viewing three 10 minute YouTube videos. So we found that when visiting Alexa, Alexa Top 100 sites, the claim of 90% data savings uh, is a bit exaggerated. Uh, on average, these browsers save around 50% of data, uh, with the better performing browsers like Puffin Free saving 77%, and browsers such as UC Mini and UC Browser, which don't proxy HTTPS connections, actually using more data with data savings mode enabled rather than disabled. We also found that it doesn't appear to benefit the user to view video content with data saving browsers, as almost all browsers either use the same amount of data or more data with data savings mode enabled. Now we're gonna look at the effects on usability that data saving browsers have compared to a traditional browsing experience. At any point in time, many users of a data saving browser will share a single proxy server IP address. This creates a natural choke point where an end web server could see a greater than normal number of requests originating from a single IP address. This increases the likelihood that the reputation of a data saving proxy server's IP address could suffer. This would lead to more rate limiting, CAPTCHAs, and even IP blacklisting. On top of this, the actions of a malicious minority of users who could perform bot-like activities through a data saving browser could have an adverse effect on the benign users of that browser. In order to determine how anti-bot services react to data saving browsers, we utilize Google's reCAPTCHA v3, which returns a confidence score to web servers that the current client is a human. A score of one indicates that the client is almost certainly a human, and a score of zero means that the client is most likely a bot. In order to isolate the data saving proxy servers as the sole culprit to a lower reCAPTCHA score, we attempted to make our traffic look as human-like as possible. This means that we only ran our experiment between typical browsing hours of 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. and visited a random set of the Alexa Top 100 sites before recording the CAPTCHA score on a web server under our control. After we repeated this experiment for one week, we found that in general, browsing with data savings mode enabled leads to, leads to lower reCAPTCHA scores than with the disabled. Additionally, we observed a higher variance in the return scores with it enabled. This can be attributed to the reputation of each data saving proxy server we encountered over this week. We also introduced an attack paradigm where a malicious user of a data saving browser performs bot-like activity in order to taint the proxy server's IP address. We performed a proof of concept attack 
using Puffin Premium Browser and determine this is possible if the victim and the attacker both are browsing using the same proxy server, share the same device model, and visit the same site at around the same time. Even with these restrictions, attackers can easily scale this attack up to affect more users simply by using a few popular mobile device models and targeting popular sites on a consistent basis. Next, we discuss the infringement of user privacy that data saving browsers are responsible for. In order to effectively save user data, data saving browsers must be in a position where they could potentially exfiltrate or modify user data in transit. We study potential privacy violations from the following lenses. Modifications to HTTP headers, modifications to the HTML content itself, and leakage of user data from requests and responses. We found that Opera browsers remove vital HTTP security headers from responses such as XFrame options, which protects users from clickjacking attacks, CSRF tokens, which protect users from confused deputy attacks, and HSTS, which pr protects users from SSL stripping attacks. The dropping of these headers have left all users of Opera browsers exposed to attacks until this was patched after our vulnerability report. We also found that Opera and UC browsers exfiltrate persistent device identifiers, such as the device serial number, phone number, and IMEI number. These identifiers could be used to track users across browsing sessions. However, we didn't find any browser that modified the HTML content of responses or reused any data we leaked in responses from our web server, such as credentials for third-party sites and links to private pages on our site. Although this is what we expected, since these browsers are reputable and have you know, millions of users, so doing something that overtly malicious was not something we expected. Now we will look at the degradation used to security that occurs when browsing with the data saving browser. Since users have no control over the proxy server that their traffic is sent through, they must trust that all data saving proxy servers follow strong security practices. We studied the degradation in user security that occurs with data saving browsers from the following lenses. First, the attack surface present on the proxy servers. So how vulnerable are the proxy servers themselves to attack? Next, we compared this, the strength of Cypher suites provided to end web servers with data savings mode enabled and disabled. And lastly, we look at how errors and SSL certificates are handled by each browser. We found that many of the browsers we studied have proxy servers that have severely outdated and vulnerable software listening on them. For example, UC Browser and UC Mini have a number of proxy servers that host versions of Nginx and Twisted Web that are up to five years out of date and have a max CVE score of 7.8 out of 10. Since users have no control over what proxy server they are assigned, a single compromised proxy server could have devastating effects to all users of the data saving browser. Next, we compare the number of strong and weak cipher suites provided by each data saving browser that proxies HTTPS connections with data savings mode enabled and disabled. We found that many browsers offer end web servers more weak cipher suites and less strong cipher suites with data saving mode enabled as opposed to disabled. This is most evident in the case of Opera Browser and Opera Mini that provide many more weak cipher suites with data savings mode enabled. Lastly, we look at how each browser handles errors in the SSL certificates of end web servers. In the table, the green check marks indicate that the browser blocked the user from visiting the site with the specified SSL certificate error, requiring them to click through multiple confirmation messages before proceeding to the site. Chrome is the only browser in this category. The orange exclamation points indicate that the browser only required the user to dismiss a small pop-up window before visiting the vulnerable site. Lastly, the red X marks indicate that the browser not only allowed the user to visit the vulnerable site without any warning, but also displayed a positive security indicator like a lock icon in the URL bar. Obviously, this is the worst case scenario, and Opera and Puffin browsers are the culprits here. However, we will take a closer look at the absolute worst case scenario where Opera browsers incorrectly accept certificates signed by Superfish. Superfish was an adware that shipped with Lenovo laptops. What it did was it signed certificates of all websites visited on those laptops for the purpose of injecting advertisements. The signing key used for this was eventually made public, which invalidated any certificate signed using it. However, we found that Opera browsers with data savings mode enabled accepted such certificates. 
To demonstrate this, we performed a man-in-the-middle attack targeting our own site. The screenshots on the bottom of this slide show what the user would see with data savings mode disabled and enabled when visiting this site. You can see in the right screenshot that a user of Opera with data saving mode enabled would feel pretty secure while being man in the middle. What makes this so terrible is that from the time the Superfish key was made public in around 2015 until our vulnerability disclosure late last year, all users of Opera browsers were using data savings mode were vulnerable to man the middle attacks on all websites they visited. Lastly, we will propose an improved data savings design. Currently, users are forced to choose data savings over security and privacy. This is obviously not ideal. The vulnerabilities we discovered all arise from attempting to intercept all TLS traffic for maximum data savings. However, multimedia content is a major culprit of increased data usage. We therefore propose a new data savings design where the browser always fetches the main HTML content over a direct HTTPS connection and then requests multimedia resources through proxies. This would reduce the impact of misconfigured proxy servers while also saving users' data over both HTTP and HTTPS. So in summary, data saving browsers allow users to surf the web while reducing the worry of data usage. However, we find that data saving claims of browser vendors to be a bit exaggerated. We also found that when using a data saving browser, users are more likely to be labeled as a bot, leading to more captures and rate limiting. Data saving browsers also infringe on user privacy by harvesting sensitive user information such as device specific identifiers. Lastly, enabling data savings mode has a negative impact to user security and leaves users more vulnerable online simply by flipping a switch. Thank you for your time and I'd be happy to take any questions.